parents and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter 4 talking about the test design techniques and we are continuing ahead with 4.3 that is white box test techniques. As a part of today's tutorial we'll be looking into the next technique of white box testing that is decision testing and also understanding the major differences between decision testing and statement testing too. As discussed earlier in our previous tutorial, uh, statement testing is all about measuring the number of statements in a given fragment of code, whereas decision testing is more about measuring the decisions within a fragment of code. So decision testing is basically to test the decisions in a given particular fragment of code and measure them with minimum number of test cases. But this technique helps you again, just like uh, statement testing, that how many minimum number of test cases would be enough to get 100% coverage on the number of decisions which a code may have at any point of time. Again, these techniques are pretty much applicable at the unit testing level and generally used by developers given that as of today, the developers are the one which perform the unit testing level for a given particular product. Also decision coverage is measured differently just like uh, statement coverage and it is the measure of percentage of decision executed by a given number of tests for a fragment of code. So at any point of time, if you have any given number of test cases executed, we'll be measuring that how many these uh, decisions were covered with the help of the test you have written over the number of decisions. So the decision coverage is measured as number of decisions executed or covered by the test which we have created divided by the total number of decisions in the given code multiplied by 100. So again, for a similar instance, what if you have eight decisions in the particular given code, then you would need uh, some number of test cases to cover all the decisions in the given code. So say for example, your test cases which are written are covering six of the decisions, then you have achieved 80% decision coverage on the given fragment of code. Let's understand the same with the typical example and understand what exactly decision is all about and how these decisions can be measured with minimum number of test cases. Taking something similar example like the previous, here we have a fragment of code called as read A, read B. If A is greater than B, then print A is bigger, else print B is bigger. Now the most important thing to understand here that the arrows here, the green color arrows represents the decision. Whereas when it comes to the black ones, they are called as the nodes or the statements. So it's not necessary that you will always find an else condition on top of it in a given program or fragment of code. So it's not necessary that all the statements is getting covered, will be covering the decision coverage also, right? For a given example, what we have right now, if we convert this into the flowchart, we pretty much understand that there are two decision outcomes from a condition that is A greater than B. Now, here the point is to make sure that try with minimum number of test cases that covers all the green lines in the given fragment of code or the flowchart. Let's try this out with a simple example and understand how exactly this could be even possible. Taking further the extension of this particular example and trying to draw out the number of test cases. For example, if I take one straight path given that the number one is being discussed here, I understand that there is a possibility that one test will cover all the maximum number of decisions in the given flow chart, but it is left out with the remaining two on the right side. So that means one test is not enough to have 100% decision coverage. I would need to write some more test to cover the remaining. And if I take this the path number two, it covers the remaining two, which is the false statement or false decision as an outcome of the condition, which covers the 100% decision. So decision testing is all about finding out the minimum number of test cases to cover 100% decision in the given fragment of code, which certainly gives us an understanding that if there are no statements on the alternate path, which is false, still it returns me that decision coverage would go there. Did you understand that? Let's try with another example here to get it better way. Let's try looking at this particular example where a fragment of code, which is a pseudocode says, 
read A, which is a user input. If A is greater than 0, then get into another condition and also check if A is equal to 21. If A is equal to 21, then print the key end if end if. That means I've never asked this particular program to do anything otherwise, which is like false statement and I'm only giving instructions on the true path. So in order to convert this particular fragment of code into flowchart, on the right hand side, you can see this is how the flowchart would look like where we have read in the input. There's a first condition check if A is greater than zero. If in case it is false, it will directly end without printing anything. But if it is true, it will continue to the next condition where A is equal to 21 will be checked. If in case it is false, it will just exit and come to the end without doing anything. And in case it is true, it will go and print the key and then come to the end. Now if you see here, if I'm talking about statement testing, I just need one test covering the outer part. Okay, just one test covering just the true path and it covers all the statements with one test. One test. Whereas when it talks about the decision, which is always to test all the branches or all the decisions in the given fragment of code, I would need uniquely three tests. One, which goes through the false of A is greater than zero. Second, which goes with A greater than zero, but it is not equal to 21. And third, which is to cover the true path of the remaining, right? Which is decision testing. We are not talking about statement. So we would need minimum at least three test cases to cover all the green lines, which are the decisions in this particular flowchart. Now, I hope that makes very clear understanding to you that what exactly decision testing is and how it is different from statement testing. We can also derive some common tests from here that decision testing is a stronger technique than statement testing, giving this particular example right here. That in this example, I just need one test to have 100% statement coverage, whereas I need three test cases at least to have 100% decision coverage. So even if I'm not conducting statement testing, decision testing will take care of that, right? And also we can derive from here that 100% decision coverage on a particular code guarantees 100% statement coverage always, but not vice versa. I hope that makes sense to all of us here. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.